On behalf of the University, I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to you to this congregation for the conferment of degrees here in the Barony Hall. Today is a very special day in our University calendar because it's a graduation day. It makes it a day of celebration for our graduates, for the family and friends, and for all of the staff of the University. And I can't think of a better venue in which to start this celebration than here in the Barony. In the United States, they refer to these events as commencement ceremonies, as they use them to signify the beginning of a new journey as opposed to an ending. And it's in this spirit we also wish to celebrate graduations at Strathclyde. Now, in a few moments, it will be my privilege to cap each of our graduates as their name is called out and they come up on stage to receive their award. The capping tradition has its roots in ancient China and it's recognised as a rite of passage and as a mark of achievement. And for each of our graduates once capped, this also signifies that they are now part of a community of scholars at the University of Strathclyde that can stretch back over 200 years to the Scottish Enlightenment. So they've been very good company. At the start of this morning's ceremony, we have the conferment of an honorary degree. And these are awards which are made by the university to recognize the particular contribution that someone has made during their career. And we'll hear a little bit about those contributions during the conferment. At the close of graduation, we have a reception in our nearby Lord Todd building to which everyone is invited to come along. We also hope to have an academic procession over to the Lord Todd building. That will very much depend upon the weather. And we'll get an update on that towards the end of this morning's proceedings. In the meantime, I do hope that you enjoy the ceremony. And when you see your loved one come up on stage to receive their award, I would strongly encourage you to celebrate. These occasions don't come around very often, and for many, they're once in a lifetime. So please make the most of it. I now formally declare that this congregation for the conferment of degrees is open, and I invite Professor Jennifer Davidson of Humanities and Social Sciences to present our honorary graduate to receive her award. Thank you. <clears throat> Vice Principal Professor McGregor, I have the greatest pleasure and honor to present to you Dr. Linda DeCastiger for the degree of Doctor of the University. This is such a pleasure for me because I know just how deserving of this recognition she is. And I will enjoy expressing to you the immense contribution that Dr. DeCastiger has made. It's an honor because of who she is and a delight because I know that what makes Dr. DeCastiger such an extraordinary person is not just what she has achieved, but who she is. Dr. DeCastiger has dedicated her career to the benefit of Glasgow's people. Her influence now extends across Scotland and internationally. Let me start by telling you about her career. Her career has taken her from qualifying and working as a doctor with a clinical background in obstetrics and gynecology in the UK and West Africa, to taking a step into the wider area of public health, where she's been a consultant for almost 30 years. And is, and is passionate about improving and changing the health and well-being of our nation. She trained in public health in Northeast Thames Regional Health Authority and then at the Public Health Research Unit at the University of Glasgow and has specialist interests in mental health, care of older people and child health. Dr. De Castiger spent two years seconded to the Scottish Executive Health Department as the head of Child and Maternal Health Unit where she developed plans and policy on child health surveillance, sexual assault services, child protection, pediatric services, and maternity workforce development, before then returning to Glasgow as director of public health in one of the largest health systems in the UK that includes many of the most deprived areas with the poorest health, as you may know. It's arguably one of the toughest jobs in Scotland, and she is tasked with improving some of the worst, worst health statistics in the world. Dr. De Castiger recently took a leave of, uh, of, of work from her leave of uh, absence from her la work as director of projects for the international charity, the International Federation of Obstetrics and Gynecology, where she led the implementation of a program to deliver postpartum contraception in six countries in Africa and in Asia. She's been involved in teaching and research with over 30 publications in peer-reviewed journals on disability, on women's health, 
and health improvement and is currently involved in a research study of alcohol in pregnancy. Dr. DeCastiger has a long-standing special interest in maternal and child public health and has worked tirelessly to bring to the attention of ministers, civil servants, and senior managers across health and social care the up-to-date research and analysis of the cumulative impact of childhood adversity across the life course and its implications for social and economic policy. Adverse childhood experiences, or ACEs as they're known, are powerful determinants of mental and physical health throughout our lifespan. And Dr. DeCastiger is leading national efforts to tackle sources of early adversity, whether they be economic, environmental, or social. She chairs the multi-agency Scottish Adverse Childhood Experiences Hub, a key influencer in Scotland's ambition, supported by the First Minister to be the first ACE-aware nation. In this same spirit of collaborative practice, Linda's strong leadership has considerably influenced the national agenda. Of particular interest uh, to the work at Strathclyde Centre for Excellence for Children's Care and Protection, or CELSIS, where I'm the executive director, uh, Dr. De Castiger's leadership of this issue of childhood adversity has helped to bring a renewed focus of attention in the public discourse on the importance of childhood. And this is of particular relevance to children who are in need of care and protection and their families who are amongst those who experience the greatest levels of adversity. She's, continued to Scottish she's contributed to national policy in many other arenas as well through the membership of many, many, many Scottish Government Committees. I will not list all of those, but they do include uh, the role of Chair of the Scottish Public Health Network, a member of the Child and Young People's Health Support Group, on the Commission, of the Fem Commission on Female Offenders, and a member of the Discovery Group of the Independent Root and Branch Review of Care. Dr. De Castiger is a trustee of several charities that include the Mental Health Foundation and Glasgow City Mission, and we were so pleased when Dr. De Castiger also became a board member of Celsus in our early years, helping to shape Celsus' focus and development. And she continues to be a friend to Celsus and a fierce advocate for children who are facing the greatest levels of adversity. Now, while Dr. De Castiger's achievements are so impressive, it's not until I can convey to you who she is that you will understand the greatest level, that you will understand um, why she is so deeply respected. Dr. De Castiger's uniqueness, I think, lies in the way she combines resoluteness and determination with persuasiveness and patience. She is a humble, caring, and sympathetic listener, a great friend who is always humorous, with a quick laugh, and a great sense of fun. She lives her life and applies her work with the greatest of integrity and with openness, and is a role model and an inspiration for all of us. She is most certainly an optimist, always believing the best in people, and as a result, bringing out their best. She does not suffer fools gladly. She has no time for group think. She cuts through rhetoric, challenges uncritically accepted assumptions, and has absolutely no time for vested self-interest. Instead, Dr. De Castiger is driven by a keen sense of social justice, focused not on protecting professional interests, but on the benefits for the people we are trying to serve. Diplomatic, but always direct. She is refreshingly honest, even when there are particularly difficult messages to convey. As one of her colleagues has said to me, she exudes common sense. Dr. De Castiger is fiercely determined, raising a wonderful family while carving out a very successful career. And she also has so many other fascinating dimensions to her life, which I will not share with you in detail here, but they include things uh, from her life in West Africa to walking the red carpet at the BAFTAs. And we are all the richer for her excellent uh, and compelling contributions to the lives of the people of Glasgow and well, well beyond. And so it is with great pleasure, therefore, Vice Principal, that with the authority of the Senate, I ask you to confer upon Dr. Linda de Castiger the degree of Doctor of the University, Honoris Causa. I claim you Doctor of the University, Honoris Causa. Many congratulations and welcome to the University.
I want to start by just saying a heartfelt thank you for this great honour. I feel very privileged to have been awarded this degree today and thank you Jennifer for all the lovely things you said about me. However, when I was thinking about this, I was reminded that Neil Simon, the famous comedy writer, when he was awarded his honorary degree said, would you ever let an honorary mechanic fix your brand new Mercedes? <laughs> but I am also privileged to be able to say a few words to you who are also graduating today. You're a, most of you are at a very different stage in life than I am, and the world you're entering is a different world than I entered as I graduated from medicine in 1979. We had no internet, no mobile phones, no social media. Your parents had no idea what you were up to, and nor did they expect to. I remember one summer hitchhiking from San Francisco to New York, getting into all sorts of scrapes. And people at home were not that worried about me because they didn't know what was going on. But despite all these things that have changed, I think there are some principles that remain unchanged. And I wanted to share with you some of the wise words that I have taken with me throughout my career. And they were said by Sir William Osler, the famous Canadian physician, who is one of the four founding professors of the famous Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore. And he said, a good physician treats the disease. A great physician treats the patient who has the disease. And this is not just wise words to look at the whole person, just for doctors and patients. But I would say this is a principle that applies to whichever clients or service users that you are going to be dealing with, to your colleagues, your bosses, your staff team, to look at the circumstances of somebody's life, to try and understand their story. They may be fighting a battle that you've never had to wage. And it relates to the reason that, or one of the reasons that Strathclyde has awarded me this great honor because of the work on adverse childhood experiences, which is not just my work, but the work of many, many other people. And it relates to research that shows what happens to you in early life if you suffer some of these adverse experiences such as child abuse or child neglect, or you grow up in a household where one parent at least has addiction issues has been in prison, where there's domestic violence, even if there's a parent with a severe mental illness or there's separation or divorce. The more of these ACEs, as they're called, that a young person experiences, the greater their risk of physical and mental health problems, of addictions, of criminality, of low academic achievement. And what that means is the agencies who've taken this ACEs approach on board, for example, Police Scotland, rather than when they see a young person who's offending or at risk of offending, rather than saying, what have you, what have you done? They will ask, what has happened to you? And that may be an explicit question, tell me your story, or it may be a thought process that enables you to react with more empathy and understanding. And as you go into the workforce or you go further on in your studies, I would encourage you to take this approach, not rush to judge others, but to widen your circle of compassion, to build positive relationships with others, understanding their background or the difficulties they might be experiencing. And some of you may even be sitting here thinking, well, I've had some of these aces. And yet here you are, high achievers functioning well. What has made you so resilient? And one of the most important things is having one trusted adult in your life. And I would ask as you move into the next stage of your studies or your career, that you ask whether you could be that one trusted adult for a young person in difficulty. 
And that may be volunteering as part of the many mentoring schemes we have in this area, or it may be being a mentor for a young colleague or a young student. I've had the privilege of mentoring a few uh, young people in my career, and I would just simply say you get a lot more out of it than you ever put in. So I celebrate your achievements here today and I congratulate you. And I would just like to finish by summarizing what I'm trying to say in the words of Maya Angelou, the Ghanaian American writer and poet. And she said, I've learned that people will not remember what you said. They won't even remember what you did, but they will never forget the way you make them feel. Thank you. Vice Principal, in the name of the University and by the authority of Senate, I present to you these students. For the degree of Doctor of Philosophy for Research in Counselling, Afnan Ahmed R. Ali Mehdi. <laughs> Wendy Trainer. Research in European Public Policy, Claudia Gloazzo. For Research in Law, Khalid Ahmed Hafed Al Shabi. Sharif Mohammed Badreldin El El Nagahi. Rose Pearl Wheeler Ozan. For research in psychology, Christine Corin McMonagall. For the degree of Master of Science in International Relations, Law and Security, Dura Simni Emmanuel Femi. Kieran Falloon. <laughs> Sophie Eve Hanlon. <laughs> Chloe Lay. <laughs> Oksana Makarenko. Nicole Anna Macasbrava. <laughs> Louisa Maria Yax Vae. <laughs> In public policy, Katie Ann McGregor. <laughs> Fraser Douglas George Sharp. In political research, Laura Ann Wood. In international relations, Pachara Kam Chaimano. Tirath Kaur. Stephen James McLean. In European politics, Aidan McRae. In politics, Stuart Bagnall. James Clear. Ewan Leslie Davidson. In educational psychology, Amy Louise Began. <laughs> In 
Jessica Ruth Corbett. Lisa Forsyth. Ruth Elizabeth McLeod. Alistair James Mitchell. Vanessa Piglitaro. Katie Elizabeth Anis Quinn. Darren John Ray. Hannah Rogers. Kirsty Jane Swanson. In research methods in psychology, Rebecca Gerard Carney. Jennifer Dahl. Sarah Hazel Davy. Siobhan Amanda Doherty. Rebecca Catherine Eaton. Amy Margaret Denver Ferguson. Lauren Gilmore. Rebecca Louise Johnson. Emma Trotter McCluskey. Georgia Mooney. Patricia Francis Mooney. Rachel Morrison. Andrew Paul Mungle. Paul Nothderft. Lauren Kirsty O'Donnell. Rowena Mari Piers. Becky Helen Preston. Chris G. Reynolds. Vivian Smythe. In clinical health psychology, Lisa Brennan. Maria Elena Christolidou. Choi Nam Priscilla Chung. Shannon Louise Delaney. Myrto Estafiu. Stephanie Chloe Fife. Saeed Fatima Iqbal. Triada Kapsuri. Caitlin Patricia Kelly. Man Lee. Laura Marie McCabe. Louise Mackay. Grace Elizabeth McPherson. Caitlin Helen Meachin. Zara Mohammed. Elena 
Pala. Kate Preston. Kirsten Richardson. Emma Hugh Semple. Abigail Tofts. Christina Silimeki. Fiona Watson. Lindsay Allison Wright. In psychology with a specialisation in business, Richard Dunstan Patrick Body. Mona Aisha Khalid. Laurie McDonald. Nesli Han Osmert. Abdul Sami Kahar. Dawn Ramage Bloodworth. Lisa Robertson. Rosito Rusanova. Julia Smith. In counselling and psychotherapy, Samra Anis. Flora Bernath. Claire Inglis. Hayley Marie Johnston. Elvira Maria Kesoglu. Chanel Yvette McIntyre. Rachel Elizabeth Matheson. Caroline Melville. Lucia Mitcher. Erta Poseta. Tyrell Planterose. Jessica Shaw. Alison Thao. Mariana Vidali. Dominique Walterson. In person centered counselling and psychotherapy, Dionysia Kaimaxi. For the degree of Master of Laws in Internet Law and Policy, Iri Dumari, Ojeng Bedi, or P. Amy. <laughs> Daniel Ihini Nawog Nawugwu. In Information Technology and Telecommunications Law, Laurie Kendergian. In Mediation and Conflict Resolution, Crawford Angus Bain. In Global Environmental Law and Governance, Jin Lee. Vili Platboet. In International Commercial Law, Tamada Hilal Hamed Al Maskari.
Ashma Sharma. In law, Arunotai Suwasuwan. In climate change law and policy, Nishant Beniwal. For the degree of Bachelor of Science in Speech and Language Pathology, Maya Matvichuk. Elsa Mary Johnston. In Sports and Physical Activity, Liam Joseph Miller. For the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Politics and International Relations, Amy Hamilton. In Psychology, Sophie Brown. Rachel Jennifer Patrick. Alice Dawn Ross. Kurram Shahzad Ahmed. Christina Dunny Pace. Dawn Louise Murray. For the degree of Bachelor of Laws, Alicia Kelly. Francis Doherty. Jesse Daniel Froelich. Claire Louise McFadden. Hassan Tabrez Malik. Elizabeth Ann O'Hanlon. Laura Watt Sweeney. In Scots and English Law, Ikenna Kingsley Njoku. <laughs> Melissa Eleanor Maria Jack. <laughs> Ashley Elizabeth Diane Middleton. <laughs> Mohammed Pervez Sadiq. Sukjeet Singh Sangha. In clinical law, Kieran Patrick White. Robert Lindsay Dorian. For the postgraduate diploma in clinical health psychology, Sarah Hassan A. Alemni. In counselling, Eileen Hamilton. In professional legal practice, Aisha Akhtar. Isra Ali. Reese McDonald Ashmore. Shabnam Bashir Ahmed. Nicola Ann Bradley. Elizabeth Brown. Pamela Carrigan. Thomas Crawford. <laughs> Stuart Cunningham. <laughs> Lauren Dalgleish.
Josh Alexander Dowie. Carly Suzanne Duckett. Iron Fakit. Emma Frotan. Gillian Green. Camilla Ann Greenhorn. Callum Samuel Haswell. Taylor Henry. Danielle Alexandra Jeffrey. Elizabeth MacArthur. Heather McCormick. Hannah Elizabeth McGurr. Loretta McCardy. Sarah Frances McElwam. Kerry Ann McIver. Liam James Nicholas Mackay. Ross Alexander Mackenzie. Katie McKinnon. Louise Malone. Lucibillo Manette Mabisa. Rachel Jane Miel. Sinead Moran. Sean Gerard Mulgrew. Chloe Elizabeth Neal. Sohai Brussel. Shireen Razak. Amy Jennifer Robertson. Paul James Sanders. <laughs> Kathleen Darcy Sharp. <laughs> Richard Steele. <laughs> Sophie Stewart. <laughs> Sarah Jane Thompson Robertson. Kirsty Stevenson Watson. Sarah Louise Westerman. Michelle Mary Wilson. Michelle Christine Young. Degree of Postgraduate Diploma, Diploma in Professional Legal Practice, Francis Ellen Wilton Taylor.
Ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, and most of all, Strathclyde University's newest graduates, it is my pleasure to once again welcome you to our graduation ceremony here in the Barney Hall. Quite rightly, our graduates have been centre stage, and I would like to begin my address by congratulating all of you once again on your academic achievements. Your hard work has paid off, and this has now been recognised in front of your families, supporters, friends, and the staff who taught and supported you during your time at the university. We celebrate your efforts and your achievements. Very well done indeed. Now, in a short while, at the close of graduation, you may ask to join the academic procession as this leaves the Varney Hall. This invitation actually symbolises the fact that you're no longer students, but now full members of the academic community of Strathclyde, a community that numbers over 180,000 individuals. The class of 2019 is graduating at a time of considerable change in Scotland, in the UK, and internationally. And there is no doubt that challenges lie ahead for us all. However, as members of the Strathclyde family, you belong to a large, growing worldwide community with a shared ethos of tolerance and understanding and a desire to make a positive difference. I hope the memory of today is something that will stay with you wherever you go and whatever you choose to do in life. We will keep in touch with you through our alumni team and I would ask that you also keep in touch with us. Let us know what you're up to, what you think about what we're doing at the university, and what you could do to help future generations of students. As graduates of a socially progressive university, you have a competitive advantage, having been equipped with the skills, know-how, and capacity to absorb knowledge, together with the ability to positively influence and shape the world around you. In Scotland, we are fortunate in having a higher education system which is internationally respected. And as a society, we are quite right to invest in it. Education broadens the mind and it creates opportunities for individuals and for society. The opportunities that education gives each of us also carries with it a responsibility to use what we have learned wisely and for the good of others. A sense of duty should come readily to graduates of this university. As Strathclyders, we only have to look to the achievements of those who have gone before us for our inspiration. To John Anderson, our founder, who established this university for the good of mankind. To the world's first oil man, James Parapin Young. To the missionary and explorer, David Livingston. And John Logie Baird, who did such pioneering work on the development of television. In the present day, we look to Dame Eilish Angelini, a pioneer in Scottish justice as the country's first female Solicitor General and later the first female Lord Advocate. And to Sir Tom Hunter, one of the most successful entrepreneurs in Scottish history and a philanthropist who uses his wealth to the benefit of others. I am sure that you have been given lots of advice on how best to plan your life. Some of this advice you will rightly ignore, some of it you may accept, but mostly you'll have to learn for yourself. Robert Louis Stevenson put it well when he said, don't judge each day by the harvest you reap, but by the seeds that you plant. Now to reach this point in your life today, each of you will have traveled a different journey. For some, the path will have been relatively smooth, and for others, this may have been more challenging. However, I'm certain of one thing, that none of you would be here without the encouragement of your supporters and families. They have picked you up when you have been down and they have helped you when you've needed it. And many will be here today proudly watching as you cross this stage with broad smiles and the odd tear in their eye. Now they are celebrating today not just because you're almost off the payroll, but there is something in that, but because you carry with you their hopes, their wishes and confidence for a successful career. For the past half hour or so, their applause has rung in your ears as you each, in turn, cross the stage to receive your award. 
I would like, like to now invite all of our graduates to show their appreciation for the help received from their supporters and family. I touched earlier on some of the key figures who have helped to create and shape the University of Strathclyde. And you can tell a lot about the values of an organisation by looking at its roots. Strathclyde traces its lineage back to 1796, when John Anderson brought it into being the only Scottish university founded during the Age of Enlightenment and embodying the Enlightenment principles of reason, tolerance and equality. John Anderson's belief in useful learning and his commitment to taking knowledge and using this for the greater good is the motivating force which gives Strathclyde University its momentum today. In many ways, our founder, John Anderson, was ahead of his time as he advocated in the 18th century the education of both men and women of all classes. This vision is just as important today and as a socially progressive university we want the talent of our students to be developed to the highest level for the benefit of society. This can be seen in our pioneering law clinic, where our students provide support and representation to people who cannot afford legal advice. It can also be seen in our technology and innovation centre, which is transforming the way in which we celebrate and work in collaboration with business, industry and the public sector to bring global competitive advantage to Scotland. And this is a tangible sign of the university's commitment to world-class research and ensuring that outcomes have maximum benefit to society and to the economy. We are a university for innovation, seeking breakthroughs which will address the most pressing challenges facing the world. Through new and effective medicines, meaningful approaches to climate change, new technologies to address energy poverty and food poverty by informing policy that addresses public need and makes for a vibrant and fair society and by offering much needed independent insight into complex political, economic and social issues. These represent a small sample of the many contributions being led by our world-class staff and students in taking new knowledge and using it to solve problems in industry, in the classroom and in the boardroom. We continually strive to enhance the student experience and invest in our campus, creating facilities like our £31 million Strathclyde Sports Building to support fitness, health and well-being. Our new £20 million District Energy Network, which is reducing our carbon footprint. And we are investing over £60 million in a new teaching and learning facility in the heart of the campus. And we are halfway through a £1 billion campus development programme. Other highlights which have happened over the last year include research in psychological sciences and health, which is exploring how older people can assist primary school pupils to boost their attainment levels. The study is investigating ways in which older adults can support pupils from primary one to primary four in the development of activities to enhance reading and writing skills. The faculty's Professor Elisa Morguera recently won Strathclyde University's largest ever research grant, a £20 million project bringing together 50 international partners to transform the world's response to increasing plastic pollution, rising sea levels and overfishing. Dr Alexandra Morbedi, a psychological scientist in health, was a partner in the Think Activity project which won the top team category of the Scottish Health Awards. The project promotes physical activity in hospital patients by offering them activities with the aim of offsetting the negative impact of sedentary behaviour. Strathclyde's award-winning law clinic has continued its success, now having dealt with over 1,800 cases and it has secured around £800,000 for members of the public during its 16-year history. Professor Graham Reid and Professor Richard Rose both of the School of Government and Public Policy have been elected as Fellows of the Royal Society of Edinburgh. And Strathclyde's Law Clinic was also joint winner of the Public Service Awards and the North West Glasgow Community Championship Awards. 
Now, these are just some of the many contributions that have been made by our staff and students across humanities and social sciences. And Strathclyde has been increasingly recognised as a place where things happen, and this is why our graduates are so highly prized by companies and organisations looking to recruit the best talent to drive their businesses forward. Our success is in no small part due to the collective efforts and talent of our staff, the 3,900 colleagues who deliver our vision as a leading international technological university. And like me, they are very proud of your achievements. All of our students learn how to be innovative, enterprising and creative and they make a real difference when they go out into the workforce. So wherever your career takes you, always remember that as a Strathclyde graduate, useful learning carries with it responsibilities that go beyond academic scholarship. And finally, let me offer my sincerest congratulations to you all once again on your achievements, and I hope that you enjoy the remainder of what is a very special day. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that now concludes the formal part of this morning's proceedings, which I hope you've enjoyed and that you'll take away very many happy memories of a wonderful event. I would remind you that we have a reception in our nearby Lord Todd building, to which everyone is invited to come along for some refreshments uh, and some celebrations. Unfortunately, the weather is not good enough, which is surprising at this time of year in Glasgow, but uh, we won't have an academic procession over to the barn, but once we've concluded the ceremony, if you could follow us over to the Lord Todd, we will see you there for some refreshments. I now formally declare that this congregation for the conferment of degrees is closed. <laughs>